Anna. And I'm Ryan. And we're from the House and Homestead, and today we're going to be talking tools. Yeah. So specifically, we're going to be talking about tools that can put together an essential toolkit for pretty much any project or you know fix that you have around your home. Yeah. So I've kind of put it out to my readers a few times now, um, you know, asking what kind of skills they'd like to learn to help them become a little bit more self-sufficient. And what I've heard from a lot of people is that they'd like to learn how to do more of their kind of home repairs and just small DIY projects and things like that around the house um, so that they don't have to rely on somebody else to do it or call somebody else in and pay money for it. Um, and, but a lot of these people like I am are, are total newbies at this stuff really don't know much about you know tools or basic carpentry or anything like that so I thought that it would be a useful video for people to bring my my handyman husband on board and ask him to kind of go through what he thinks are the essential tools that everybody should have around the house to do basic projects for sure so um, there's obviously a lot of stuff sitting out here right now. Um, I do most of the work that I do out of these three main things. I've got my tool bag, I've got this bucket full of other pieces, and I've got my uh, cordless power tools. Um, this is me as a professional. I do this for a career. Um, the average person, if you're just doing a little bit of small uh, DIY building projects or wanting to fix things that are in your home or if you're assembling a piece of furniture even, what's on the table kind of in the center here will comprise everything you need to do pretty much any project. So um, first thing that we'll talk about is something really basic that everybody knows and that's screwdrivers. So I have a large set of screwdrivers. Uh, most important ones are these three. Uh, there's a flathead, which is as it said, a flathead, a Phillips head, which is a cross. Uh, so star. like a T, uh, T shape. And then there's a Robertson and a Robertson is a square head. Um, all of them will kind of show up all over the place, depending on what you're working on. Uh, if you buy products, depending on where they are made, they will come with a different style of screwdriver head. Uh, things that are made in North America very often have this Robertson, which is a star head, or excuse me, a Phillips, which is the star head. And uh, things in Canada in particular, where we live, the Robertson, which is the square, is the most common one. Um, and then anything that's older will usually use a flathead. So those three are are you know easy ones that you can keep around that uh, will pretty much handle anything that you need a screwdriver for. Um, the nice thing is that you don't have to go and buy a whole bunch of screwdrivers because these little multi-bit screwdrivers are a dime a dozen. You'll find them at the hardware store for a couple of dollars. Um, and the way they work is there's a different size bit um, all the way around the side inside and you just take the old one off and you can push it through the bottom to push up the one that you want. That way, if you don't have a lot of space and you don't wanna have a big tool bag like I do, um, you can buy one screwdriver and it will do most, which is awesome. Next thing we'll look at is pliers. Um, pliers are kind of self-explanatory. I mean, you use these obviously for grabbing things, uh, pinching things tight when you don't have enough hand strength to do it. Um, or if you need to, you know, try and yank something out, a uh, nail that's stuck in a board or something like that, that, um, you know, you, you can't do by hand and you don't have something that is made specifically to do that. A pair of pliers will do it, will always do the trick. These are really just basic box nose pliers. They're, they are adjustable, so um, they're either tight closed or if you have something bigger you're grabbing onto, they do open up just a little bit more to grab onto something that's a little bit larger diameter. So those, those are So I have a question about that, because yeah. I'm obviously learning too. Sure. Um, so there's needle nose pliers as well. Yep. Would you recommend having both types or would this style kind of take care of anything you'd need? This style one? will take care of most things. So this is a this is a good essential one to have around. Needle nose pliers are definitely handy if you're working on any, you know, more fine or delicate projects where you've got smaller pieces, um, but not essential. Uh, the next thing is an adjustable wrench. There are lots of sets of wrenches that you can buy that will give you every size. Most people don't need that um, unless you are using it a lot. It doesn't make a lot of sense to go out and buy a whole set when you just want to have a small little toolkit at home that'll kind of do everything. So an adjustable wrench is good. Um, it allows you to pick the size of nut or bolt that you're working, that you're trying to uh, loosen or remove or tighten without having to have a whole set of wrenches. So it's a good one to have as well. Hammer, always important. Um, so I think hammer is an obvious one. Hammering nails, breaking things apart. Um, 
if you do have a nail on the board that you want to get out, a, ha a hammer has a little prying hook on it most of the time, depending on the kind of hammer you got. A carpenter's hammer like this is the most common you'll see. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, you, you don't have to overthink this one. Hammer's good for beating on things and, you know, tearing things apart if you have to. Um, a pry bar goes well with a hammer. So if you are like us and you've got little projects around your property all the time and you're taking things apart and, you know, changing things, a pry bar is really handy. It will allow you to, um, you know, pry boards off when you can't reach the nails. It'll allow you to break apart structures and all sorts of things. So uh, this is kind of your demolition kit. It's very good for uh, removing or breaking up pretty much anything. So you can use almost a little bit like a chisel like the, and then hammer Basically, it Basically, yeah, yeah. You would, uh, you would pry underneath the surface, for example, and then you can hammer the end of it and pry it out. Um, and it's got two forked ends on it. Um, one of them for uh, a lot more leverage where you could really lift something right out. Um, so this is a really handy tool. Um, as you can see, this one's pretty beat up. It gets lots of use. The next thing here is a staple gun. Um, this is not one of those things that everyone has to have, but it's really handy. So as an example, uh, we've got our bunny pen over here. And all I needed to protect them from the winter was a roll of plastic sheeting and a staple gun. Really simple, oh, and a knife, I guess. But um, this comes in handy for a lot of other little things. If you've got, you know, upholstery coming off of furniture or, you know, things are starting to fall apart, sometimes just getting in there with a staple gun and throwing a couple staples in it will, you know, preserve the life of that for X amount of time so you don't have to replace it. Yeah, I feel like we use the staple gun a lot and it's and it's a really easy kind of basic tool to yeah. use too. I've used, I mean, yeah. Uh, how many times have I had projects that I've used a stable gun for, right? But especially working in the garden and things too. Like I find obviously with that plastic sheeting, if you're putting up a greenhouse or doing anything like that, um, I think the video that we did on making a garden cloche, mm -hmm. we use the, sca yep. the staple, staple gun, gun there gun as well, that, right? Yeah. So anything like that, kind of outdoor garden projects, I find we use the, a lot for that. Yeah, it's very, very helpful whenever you need to uh, fasten something thin and light to wood. Works great for that. And it's so quick too, right? It so is much quicker than quick. like yeah. using a hammer and nail. Very or... quick, yeah, much quicker than a hammer and nails, and and it's a lot less permanent. Staples will pull out a lot easier just by hand without having to have any tools to remove stuff. Um, next one uh, is this comes in handy for a lot of things: safety glasses. Um, this is kind of just an essential to have if you're going to be doing anything where there's a possibility of flying debris or you know a possibility that something might shatter while you're working on it. Having a pair of safety glasses to protect your eyes is, is essential. Um, tape measure. Uh, this one again I think is kind of an obvious one but you know being able to know what the lengths of things are and being able to um, determine whether something will, for example, a piece of wood will work for a project at least you can go over, somewhere. measure out what you need or exactly if you need to fit something somewhere so if you've got a piece of furniture even that you're trying to put into another side part of your house without having to actually remove that piece of furniture and take it over to the other side of the house. You could always just go and measure and make sure that the space will work. It's always good. Um, again, you can find these really cheap at a hardware store. They're just a good thing to have around at all times. Next one is a pencil. Um, carpenter's pencils are great for uh, basically any needs where you're going to have to mark distances on things. What's nice about these is they're really rugged. Um, you don't need a pencil sharpener for these. I just use a utility knife and sharpen the end that way. Um, they're, uh, yeah, useful for a lot of different things, I guess. So I had mentioned that you can also buy these pencils and they come equipped with a little level, which I thought was brilliant. So I bought one for Ryan for Christmas one year and he's used it approximately zero times. Yeah. And that's because, what's your review well, of I mean, the level pencil? The fact of the matter is that this is not a precision instrument and you know it's it's a neat idea to have a level in a pencil but um, I would question how accurate that level would be. The other thing to consider with that as well is a lot of the time if you are trying to check and see if something's level um, that size is not really going to be super helpful for you. It might be okay with like a shelf on the wall to just rest it there and try and adjust it or a picture or something like that um, but it because it only spans such a short distance and you're constantly cutting the end off of it to expose more lead, it's, um, it's yeah, only useful. Yeah, you get down to that level yeah. pretty quick. 
it's only it's only useful for a very short period of time and maybe not for anything that's too detail oriented. Did um, you want to maybe touch on the level next? Yeah, then? we can definitely touch on the level next. So that's the next one is a level. Uh, this is a two foot level. This is probably going to be more than enough for most people unless you're doing some building and construction where you need some longer levels for framing and that type of thing. This is a really great level just to have around your house. Um, we'll measure both level and plumb. Plumb is uh, is vertical. Uh, level is horizontal. Plumb is vertical. Plumb is vertical. Level is horizontal. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> They're learning a lot of like yeah. trivial pursuit knowledge here. <laughs> the nice thing about this one as well is that it also has measurements from the center point. So um, I use this as a straight edge for drawing straight lines regularly. Um, and the nice thing about this one is if you start dead center right in the middle, it will give you a measurement up to 11 inches on either side of that, which is kind of nice. Um, comes in handy so you're not having to constantly pull out your tape measure while you're drawing lines and that kind of thing. So handy, super handy. And then I've got a stud finder. No. Hey, me too. Yeah, it's built finder. in, it's built in. <laughs> so the stud finder, um, this is gonna be really helpful for anybody who is hanging something heavy in their house. Um, you know, plastic anchors are really common for people to use in drywall and that kind of thing. The only way to know for sure that something is not going to fall off of your wall is to get it into a stud. And so anything heavy, uh, a stud finder is going to come in really handy. If you've got a flat TV or something like that that you're hanging on the wall, the last thing that you want is so to be hanging just it on. Just in case, yes. like just in case we're talking really basic here and you're not yeah. sure what a stud is, did you want to... Sorry, so a stud is uh, the wooden or metal framework that is inside the walls of your house. So it is the structure of your house, essentially. Because otherwise, if you're not hitting that stud, then you're going straight through drywall and there's nothing actually behind that. That's right. So, so the drywall itself... So if you've got something itself, heavy, yeah, then drywall it might not itself, hold on the wall. Drywall itself is... Um, it, is made of a fine dust particle. It is not structurally sound. So um, plastic wall anchors are great for pictures and that kind of thing, but anything that's heavy, you want to get it into a stud. Um, getting it into a stud is going to make sure that it doesn't come off the wall. Uh, these are pretty simple to use. You essentially put it up against the wall, hold down a button, and the beep will stop eventually. Found the stud apparently. <laughs> The way that it normally works is that you put it up against the wall and you hold down the button and as you slide it across the wall it will beep when you hit the stud behind the wall so that you can mark where the stud is to put your hole in the wall. Um, so helpful will prevent things from falling off of your walls. Um, and how much would something like that usually be? Um, you know, between five and fifteen dollars. So these are all like really reasonably priced. Yeah, for the most part, items. you could probably put this toolkit together for a couple hundred dollars which isn't bad. Um, the other one is a utility knife. Um, I personally like to use a non-adjustable knife. It's It's got a about a one inch long blade um, and then I change the blades out regularly. This is my preference. There are also adjustable knives where it slides out and you can break the tip off of it when it's, uh, when it's dull. Uh, personal preference thing more than anything. Utility knives are good. They're really sharp uh, so you're not ruining your kitchen knives, opening boxes and you know, doing things that just Cutting dull them. Cutting plastic for Cutting greenhouses plastic for the greenhouses. And rabbit pins and yeah, exactly. So kind of a knife like this is good for any sort of utility purpose so that you're not ruining your household knives. Um, always remember to have extra blades around as well. And the next thing is saws. Um, I think these are obvious uh, for cutting through many different things, whether it be wood or metal. This is a hacksaw for cutting metal. Um, so uh, the number of applications is limitless, so it's, I, I won't go too far into it, but I think most people know what a saw is for. So it's good to have a couple of uh, a couple of simple saws laying around. And the other thing that I've got sitting on the table here that um, is a little less common, but I think is more important than people might, uh, might expect, is an adjustable clamp. Um, I have a whole set of these uh, because I do some woodworking and that kind of thing, and they come in really handy for holding pieces together when I'm gluing or anything like that, I like to consider these a helping hand. So for example, um, if I am wanting to hold two pieces of wood together while I make a cut so that they get the exact same cut on them, I will clamp them together and this will hold on really tight, way, way tighter than I could possibly hold on with my hands and it gives me a free hand mm -hmm. um, to work with while I'm, while I'm cutting something or um, you know, fastening something together. Or gluing something, because you do use yeah. wood glue sometimes, yes, right? Yes, yeah. And, then and that that's where these come in. And that will hold it together while that glue sets. That's right. That's where these come in really handy, is 
you know, in a situation where something needs to be held for a long period of time, clamps are good for that. Um, it helps to have, if you do decide to buy one, to make sure that you buy one that's at least wide enough that you can get something substantial in between the jaws, because these only open so far. Um, so the nice thing about clamps like this as well is they're actually reversible. So this can be um, reversed so that it is used as a spreader as well. So anyway, a clamp, another one that uh, not a huge expense, um, having having one or a few of them around is going to be helpful for a lot of different things. Um, the last thing that I'm going to show you is a drill. So the only power tool that I'm going to say is kind of an essential. Um, drill kits are really affordable to come by in hardware stores. I tend to use things that are a little bit more professional grade. So this one is actually an impact driver. Um, what this does is it has a hammering um, mechanism in it, so you can drive screws uh, without using too much force of your hand or without torquing your tool too much. Um, so I use this daily, so it actually stays in my tool bag. And um, that's one that I, again, have even used a few times. And so, again, I get kind of why you'd use it for... Um, like screwing things in, mm -hmm. but then you'd also use it for like making yeah. Holes so for drilling too. holes as well. So I mean, there's there's a multitude of reasons why you would drill holes. Uh, as an example, we were looking over at our rain barrel, which has got a little spigot attached to the bottom of it. I would have used um, the drill portion, of the drill function of that, um, to put a hole in it so that I could put a spigot through that. The other reason would be if you needed to pre-drill holes into something uh, to make sure that you don't split wood while you're screwing, uh, driving a screw through it. And sometimes you want to pre-drill a hole so that it's not spreading that wood out too hard and damaging it. So having a handheld drill, a battery powered drill or plug-in, whichever works for you, um, and a variety of screwdriver bits, something like this is, you know, maybe more than you might need, but has, you know, one of every screwdriver bit that you would need, and then a set of drill bits as well in multiple sizes to allow you to drill different size holes. It's the only power tool that I will say is almost an essential, especially in this day and age. If you're going to be hanging a picture on the wall and you want to get it into a stud, using a screw um, is going to be a lot easier to work with than using a nail, easier to remove afterwards, and you know, there's... Because you can actually use that to reverse screws as well. Exactly, and that's, that's the nice right. thing. And you know, again, without hurting your wrist, or if you've got a you know a screw that's really in there yep. and that's hard to use a manual screwdriver for. That's right. Yeah. So this is one that I find is like an everyday use for me because of what I do. But even for uh, the average homeowner who's only fixing things when they need to, this is probably one of the first tools you're going to reach for when you are doing a project in your home. Um, that's a, that's a really general workup of uh, um, tools that you can have in your home without spending a fortune, without feeling like you have to buy everything, and to be able to tackle pretty much any DIY home project. So let me know, let us know, if you enjoyed this video, then leave a comment below because if there's enough interest in this kind of thing, then we've kind of already discussed that we could do you know a series of videos on how to do small DIY projects around your home and hardware that you might want to keep on hand and then getting into some more advanced tools so some so of the power, power tools, tools and then more into carpentry and stuff because I know like you're a wealth of information about carpentry uh, but it is something that you're going to want to have some basic kind of DIY handyman skills before you really get into using power tools and doing you know more That's advanced right. projects and things like that right yep. So if you don't have one of these, <laughs> this is why <laughs> I do know some of these basic things because you've taught me, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I don't need to know a ton because he's kind of the one that takes care of that. And I'm very this grateful guy. for that. Um, <laughs> we kind of each have our roles, but I understand that there are some people that are working on their own or, you know, they just don't naturally have handyman skills like you do. Um, and so, you know, those are kind of the basics that you'll need to know. And we'll definitely, like I say, if you're interested in this, do more videos to help you out right, building from the ground up on what you need to have on hand and how to use some of these different things so that you don't have to rely on outside help and pay a fortune. Yeah, you know that's right. how much that can cost when you need to call somebody in to do those types of things for you. Mm -hmm. So again, if you like this video, then hit like and comment below. Let me know and subscribe for more updates from the House and Homestead. Bye. Bye.